Hey guys, listen, if you just bought a sled, one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to pick up is a track stand or a track lift. Something that holds the back end of the sled up off the ground. So a few years ago, I got a comment from one of my viewers, uh, YZ3783, and he did not have a very favorable opinion of the track stand that I used. And I gotta tell you, he was right. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you that stand. I'm gonna give you some of the reasons I think you should avoid it. Then I'm gonna unbox the track stand I just bought, and I'll point out some of the features that you should be looking for when you're buying one of your own. How's it going ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is David Clark and this is my old sled. So what do you want a track stand for? Anytime you want to spin the track without moving the sled. So when you're warming your sled up, you want to give it a bit of gas. Uh, if you want to spin the snow and ice off of the track before you put it away. Or if you're doing maintenance items like a track tension and alignment, you might want to spin the track and then check it. Now, typically I avoid bashing a product on the channel. I find most companies are trying to offer something of value. And sometimes that value is that it's inexpensive. So if you're buying a cheap product, there's always going to be a trade-off in quality. So this is the style track stand that I would caution you about. I've seen these listed under Wolf Tech brand and Kimpex. Now both of those companies have a better quality track stand. This is the one that I would avoid. Now one of the main problems I have with this stand is how narrow this base is. So at its widest point, this base is about 10 inches wide. And the reason that that's a problem is that it's really prone to tip over sideways. So even in here on a nice flat garage floor, it still has a tendency to tip over. It's even worse if you're doing it outside on a regular surface. And it's even worse if you don't have the lift exactly in the center. So I'll give you an example. I had the sled up on this stand and I was running it. I had the track spinning and it slipped over like this. And I had one of my track dollies sitting right next to the track. So what happened, as it tilted, the sled moved sideways, the track actually touched that dolly and fired it to the back of the garage. So in my humble opinion, this stand actually might not even be safe. The next criticism I have with this is the handle on the lever piece. So basically you just lever your sled up with it, right? But because this is this flat, inch and a half flat bar that they use for the lever, you have to press down with a fair bit of force to lift the sled up. And this has a tendency to dig into your hands. So that's the other thing I really don't like about this. But my main complaint is its tendency to tip side to side. So I would never judge anybody for trying to save a buck or two. But even at that, I've seen this track stand listed for over $80. And I think that's a fair bit of money for the quality of this product. Okay, so if this is one to avoid, let's have a look at another track stand that I think is gonna be a little bit better. All right, so this is the track stand I picked up at Princess Auto, which is kind of like Harbor Freight for my viewers in the US. It has a lot of the features I'm looking for in a track stand, but I gotta tell you, I'm holding my breath a little bit because at $49, this was actually cheaper than that other stand. Now, in terms of brand, all this really says on it is easy sourcing. So I have a feeling that's a North American distributor for products that are made in China. Okay, the instructions are not at all detailed, but I'm sure we can figure it out. It looks like it's like six bolts. So the material looks fairly heavy duty, actually. I mean, it's not gonna stop a bullet or anything, but it looks fairly sturdy. So I guess we're gonna start by putting the legs on the base. Okay, so there we go with that. And this, we just use the pin because you want to adjust that height periodically. I'm just gonna put it on the second one for now. So, okay, so this is a weakness I see with this. These are fairly cheap. It's just like a little rubber tie down. I can see that rubber wearing out and cracking eventually. And we have to probably come up with something a little more permanent. Actually, I'll probably see if I can buy some better pins than these, but those will do for now. Okay, now we'll just put the handle in. Okay. 
Now we have like this little space here that goes on. All right, so here's the two lifts side by side. So for such a simple device, there's some big differences here. So I'll point some of these out and then it'll just give you a couple things to keep in mind when you're looking for a lift. The first one is the base. So this base is like 21 inches wide, so it's like double the width of this one. The other kind of obvious difference with this base is this shield here. This is actually pretty important as a feature you should look for because your track will actually throw a fair bit of debris, ice, snow, even rocks. So when you're up there warming that sled up, this shield will come in really handy as well. The other key difference is the handle. So not only is it round, but it's got a nice big thick foam cover. That's going to be a lot more comfortable for cold hands. Okay guys, here's the real test is how well does it work. Oh my god, that works so much better. I like that. I don't... With that cheaper one, you have to put a pin in once you've got it up. And with this one, it just holds itself. So there is actually a pin that you can use to lock this in, but it actually stays locked in position as soon as you have the lever all the way down. So you can see this shield here is right behind the track. So anything that flies off of this track, whether it's gravel or ice, is just going to hit that shield. And you can see it's a nice wide steady base, so it's not going to tip over sideways. So overwhelmingly, most of the features about this lift were good. The one thing that was bad was this hook was not bent enough. So every time I pushed that lever down, it actually slipped off. So normally if I buy something that's not working out of the box, it goes back. I decided to try and fix this for a couple of reasons. First reason, it was an easy fix. I just took the rubber off, threw it in a vise, and just hammered these, put a little bit more of a bend in them, and that was enough so that it works fine. The second reason I decided to go ahead and try and fix it is the price. This thing was only 49 bucks. So it was cheap enough that it was worth a shot. And I mean, I don't know if it's going to last as long as some of the ones I see online for 150 bucks, but I know that it's a much better lift than the one that I had. All right, guys, I think I'm going to call that in for another video. So, you know, there you go. Whether you want to buy that particular lift or not, those are the features you want to keep your eye out for, right? You want a nice wide base, you want a nice round, comfortable handle, uh, and I would really look for one with that shield. All right, so if you found that video helpful, do me a favor and click that thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't already, take a second, subscribe to the channel, click the little bell icon, you'll get notified whenever I post a new video. Until the next one, I'm David Clark. Thanks for taking the time to watch. company will be trying to offer something of value. So I'm seeing a lift like this listed under a Wolf Tech brand. Oh, touch a nut and say, oh, that's a 916. Well, that's not me. So what we actually need is a 19.6... 19... 19... Oh.